Hey, good morning, everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, April 10th, 2021. How's everyone doing today? It's good to be back. It took last week off. Hey, I've got some great stuff to show you today. I've got three stocks I want to show you, three chart setups that I'm really enthusiastic about uh, for the bullish side. So if you're ready to uh, get into it, uh, welcome to another edition of our Saturday synopsis. I go over some options information and then we go into the charts, take a look at what's been happening uh, in the market over the last couple of weeks or so and see what may come forward. But we're talking about selling put options today using these three chart patterns that I want to show you. And you probably know we are option sellers here at the Smart Option Seller. And our bread and butter is selling put options because we love that strategy. So if you like to sell put options, today's going to be a good one for you. And just to, you know, back up a little bit here to talk about what selling put options are. Um, for those of you who are just getting started or, or for some veterans here, selling put options is just a way to uh, obligate yourself to potentially buy a stock of your choosing at a price of your choosing. It's a great thing. You can you could determine the price where you may want to buy a stock. And when you sell a put option, you get paid money right up front instantly from the put option buyer. And you get to choose the level where you want to buy the stock. It can be very aggressive. It could be moderate. It could be very conservative. That's how we do it. We're very conservative here. So when we sell put options, we choose strike prices that are far out of the money, well below the current price of the stock, because if we have to buy the stock, we want to buy it at a, at a very cheap price. So let me just bring up um, my uh, little cheat sheet here, I usually show this. Now, these are some basic guidelines for selling put options. Now, number one, you have to be mostly bullish on the stock. Selling put options is a neutral to bullish type of strategy. So if you're going to engage in any kind of put option selling strategy, well, it's whether it's selling naked put options, put option spreads or whatever, you have to be somewhat bullish on the stock because that's that will make the strategy work better, work faster if the stock goes up. So you have to be somewhat bullish on the stock. And you also want to get into the trade uh, at the right time. And and for us, that's that's timing the trades. OK, so you want to wait for, you know, typically a pullback in a in a bullish momentum stock. And, I, and I'll show you on the charts in just a minute. And the other thing, especially the way we do it, when you sell put options, you want to give yourself room for error. And by that, I mean, if you think the stock is going up, but you happen to be just completely wrong and the stock goes down, well, you got to give yourself some room for directional error. You got to give yourself some downside buffer in case you're wrong. And how do you do that? Well, you pick out of the money strike prices. So if the stock is here, you sell the strike price down here. Give yourself a nice cushion. That's how we do it. And typically you'll hear as an option seller, you want the least amount of time as possible. And that's somewhat true in theory. Uh, you know, options lose value every single day that they're in existence. You've, that's called time decay. So an option just loses value because it's moving towards expiration. And I always use this example. Think about an ice cube sitting out on a counter. Over time, it starts to melt slowly, but then it, that melting gets faster and faster, just slips away. That's, the, that's what time decay is for options. As it's in existence, it starts to lose a little bit of, it, of its value every day just because time is passing. And that works in an option seller's favor. But just because you want to choose um, a short dated option doesn't mean it's the best way to trade. Because if you choose short dated options as an option seller, you're going to have to choose options that are closer to the current price of the stock to get any bang for your buck, to get any money out of that option. Uh, let's just say you want to sell a one week option. Well, that option has to be closer. That strike price has to be closer to the current price of the stock. That doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room, doesn't give you a lot of buffer for, for error. So I would say one to three months out in time expiration gives you that extra cushion, that extra buffer in case you're wrong on your directional opinion. And it's very important. You need to understand how to read stock charts and figure out where the stock is going. So you want to give yourself a little extra time in case you're wrong right off the bat. And then the stock, stock starts to move up over time. And the, and number, uh, number five here is that you have to like the stock. You have to pick a stock that you know, that you're interested in, and that you're, you're okay with if you ever have to end up buying the stock. That's called the assignment process. You may be assigned and have to buy shares of stock. As long as you pick a stock that you're okay with, then you're good to go, which leads into rule number six is that 
don't sell put options on stocks just to collect the income. You know, there are certain stocks that'll pay you a lot of money when you sell put options, but those could be very risky, very volatile stocks and stocks that you may not have any interest whatsoever in potentially owning. Someone you may have gotten a tip somewhere, you heard something on TV, and you may not know anything about the stock, but you know that they're paying really good premiums if you sell a put options. Well, in my book, that's a no-no. You have to understand the stock, you have to like the stock, know what the stock does, and, and a stock that you'd be comfortable uh, potentially buying if it comes down to that. So don't sell puts just to collect the premium. And the lastly, rule number seven here, is make sure you have an exit plan. Now, if your goal is to take assignment of the stock, then that's fine. You know, you take assignment of the stock, you become a shareholder, if that's what happens. And then you, you, you have a stock just like any other stock in your portfolio. But, you know, if you're doing this shorter term and, and you're just trying to collect some income and you're not really sure you want to buy the stock potentially, well, make sure you have an exit plan. You know, take profits at some point if you have profits uh, built up or, you know, set yourself a stop loss. You know, if the stock starts to drop, that doesn't work very well when you sell put options. So if the stock drops a certain percentage, you know, maybe it's time to get out. Maybe you're just wrong and, you know, you take the loss and move on. So make sure you have some kind of exit plan. So those are your basic guidelines for selling put options. And number one is that we want to be, we want to be bullish on the stock at least. Now I want to show you a couple chart setups. These are the, you know, the title, the three stock uh, setups that I'm looking at that I'm really excited about. So let's go right to the charts here. And a little bit later on when we're done talking about this, we'll, we'll do our Saturday synopsis. We'll look at a lot of other charts, but let me bring up three of the charts that I'm looking at right now that I really like. Number one, of course, is Apple. I talk about Apple every week. I'm long Apple, you know, just for transparency, I'm long Apple. Been waiting for Apple to finally move up. I got into Apple after this move up here. It hit all time highs here at the time. It started to come off. This is when I got long Apple. I wanted, I got long around here. I was waiting for the bounce off the 20 day moving average. Here are my charts. I always have three moving averages. I got the blue line, which is the 20 day. I got a 50 day moving average and a 200 day moving average. Well, I was hoping Apple would bounce right around here. I got long, obviously the stock went down, started to go up again, down, up. So Apple started to move along this trend line here, still moving upward, and I drew this congestion pattern and Apple started to go up again. So I was good to go, happy there, made all time highs, or at least matched the all time highs here, came off. And here's where Apple made the all time highs and has been in a downtrend since. But finally, this is what I like. And this is why I like Apple, um, for the immediate future, uh, moving higher. It had been in this downtrending channel. Let me open this up a little bit better so everyone can see. Now, uh, when you're doing technical analysis, you're always looking for support and resistance levels. You're drawing chart patterns and you're trying to see where the stock may go let where the stock may go next. So Apple had been in this downtrending channel. You can see these blue lines here. I drew a downtrending channel and it finally started to move sideways. What you want to see for a stock, if, you're, if you want to get bullish, but it's currently in a downtrending channel, you want to see some sideways action and, it, and the stock finally moves outside and above the downtrending channel, which Apple did right here. A couple weeks ago, it popped out, but it came off again and started to move up. This was this past week right here. So what I really like is that Apple moved above the 20 day moving average, which is the blue line here, finally busted out of the, the above the 50 day moving average. But what I like and what I want to show everyone is what we call the, the W pattern. And I've drawn this on some of the charts before, but let me draw some, let me draw some lines here so everyone can see what I'm talking about and it'll make it become clearer. Now, as I've said before, there's a little bit of manual labor involved when you're when you're doing when you're drawing some trend lines. So let me color this up a little and make it bigger so we can all see the same thing that I'm looking at. And you can see you'll be able to see what the W pattern looks like. And the W pattern is a bullish pattern that can help you figure out. OK, that's not the line that I wanted to to do. Uh, let's get that out of here. Um, let's move this out of the way here. Let's take this off for now. 
Okay, we want to color in this line right here. Okay, give me a second, color this in. Okay, this line here, color it in, make it bigger so we can see it. Last line here, and you'll be able to see the W pattern. And you can draw this on any chart that you're looking at if you can see the W pattern. So here you can see the W pattern. And let me draw one more line here. We have the, the top of the W is the resistance line. Okay, so right around here. And let me large th make this a little bit larger so we can all see. Okay, so the W pattern is what I'm looking at within the confines of this other pattern the downtrending channel that Apple was in as well. Put that back there. So you can see the W pattern, which is bullish, and you have the top support, top resistance line. Once the stock moves above that resistance line, then it should be off to the races, okay? So it came out of the downtrending channel, which is good. This week right here, this end of the W here, Apple spent the time up and outside of the downtrending channel. It had moved above the 20-day moving average, moved above the 50-day moving average, and moved above the resistance line here, which was probably about, let me see what the price was, about $128 a share roughly. And then this Friday and Thursday of just a couple days ago, this bar right here is one day's trading. This was Friday, closed on the highs of the day. You can see the little dash mark on the right side of the chart of the bar, I mean. That's the closing price of the day, closed on the high. So Friday and Thursday, Apple busted above the resistance line, out of the W pattern, out of the downtrending channel, above all the moving averages that I'm tracking. That to me spells bullishness right there, okay? And I can only see Apple's got earnings at the end of the month. I can see it running higher towards the end of the month. It's cleared all this resistance. I think the buyers are going to be coming back in and hopefully take it up to back near its all time highs of $145 a share. So this is why I like Apple. Obviously we know it's a great company, but on top of that, you have to watch the chart patterns. You have to see what's going on. There are many millions of people that watch, stocks on charts as well. And and if you know a little bit about technical analysis, a lot of people follow the same uh, patterns, support and resistance lines. So if everyone's sort of seeing the same thing, they'll all get on the train at the same time. If people are looking at this W pattern, looking at the resistance line, looking at the downtrending channel, looking at the moving averages, and they see that Apple has moved above all of that mess, then Everyone will think at the same time, okay, Apple's bullish, and people start buying. And it had a great day Thursday and Friday. So I'm bullish for next week on Apple. I think over the next few weeks until earnings at the end of the month, it should move back up, hopefully, to all-time highs. So that's, that's what I'm looking for for Apple. Let me show you the other chart I'm looking at. AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. We talk about AMD a lot here. I love the company. We sell put options all the time on AMD. So I like the stock. So prior I had drawn this big W pattern. It had gotten above it, gotten above the resistance line, but took that fall with all the other, a lot of the tech stocks started selling off over the last two months or so. AMD been in this downtrending channel. It's hitting right on resistance at the 50-day moving average. So you can see the red line right here. This is the simple moving average, 50-day moving average. So yesterday, Friday, April 9th, it came up, and Thursday as well, right up against the 50-day moving average. It hasn't broken out of the downtrending channel yet, but what I do like is that I also see a W pattern here on AMD. Let me, let me widen this out first a little bit. Okay. So let's draw the lines here. Here's one line, here's two line, there's W here, and here's the end of the W, okay? So let's do a little editing, little manual labor, do this quick, just so we can see it better, okay? Maybe I can some make these defaults so I don't have to do this all the time, but you know, this is, this is how we do it. 
and then the last line here not not you go away and one more here okay widen it out so we can see it and then let's draw the we've got the you know the top here is let's draw the resistance line here okay so we can see it edit this just make it darker and I'll leave this on the chart for the next few weeks to see if our thought process is coming to fruition. So what we like to see AMD is now this hasn't broken out yet. So I'm watching it. Okay. Here's the W starting to form. What we want to see is AMD move above this area right here, probably above $85 a share. So if AMD could get its act together, get above the 50 day moving average here, get out and above the downtrending line and above this resistance line here, take it up. So I'm thinking anywhere, you know, 85, 86, 87 dollars. If it hits next week, AMD could probably be on its way up and out, um, hopefully to make new highs. So the Apple trade has already left the station. That one's that one's already moving. So uh, I'm bullish on Apple. We've taken trades, or I've taken trades on Apple bullish trades. AMD still watching. Haven't made any trades yet because. Uh, you don't know if it's going to break all this resistance. It could get knocked back down again. So you don't want to jump the gun yet. But keep an eye on AMD for the next week or so. Uh, what we want to see is it move above the resistance line near $85, a little above $85. If it can do that for a couple days in a row, then we have confirmation that it probably can keep moving. Okay, so that's chart number two. Let's look at chart number three is the QQQ which is the exchange traded fund for the NASDAQ. Um, this is a great way to get involved in tech stocks all at once if you want to um, play the tech game. Now, as we know, amongst the three big indexes, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ was the laggard of the three over the last two months or so had been in this downtrending channel while the Dow and S&P 500 ha had been making all time highs the NASDAQ was going lower. We had rotation out of the, you know, these popular tech stocks back into more stable stocks of the S&P 500 <clears throat> and the Dow. And now tech has made its way back. We had drawn this congestion pattern on the QQQ recently, waiting for it to pop out in one direction or the other. That's typically what happens when you have a congestion pattern, which means the, the range is wide and then it gets narrower narrower and narrower until it eventually coils up and, and has all this energy to expend and it and it typically drops out or goes above in this case and we probably knew at some point the tech stocks were going to go up again and this is exactly what happened over the last two weeks it broke out of the channel here or the congestion and started to move up now it's pretty much almost captured its all-time highs that it made about two months ago or so uh, in, in early February. So this was good. This week was major for the for the tech stocks, and we can see uh, Good Friday last Friday was, was market was closed, but Monday, this day, let me see which day it was. Yep, yeah, right here, this big bar right here was Monday. So it gapped higher on Monday, and then the rest of the week it just kept going. So the NASDAQ to me is has gotten out of the station has moved higher and we can also almost see a W pattern forming had formed on the NASDAQ as well. Once it moved above, you know, $324 or so right here was a resistance line. You can kind of see a W pattern. I won't draw it out, but, but the NASDAQ has gotten itself together and came out of the congestion pattern has moved now above the 20 day and 50 day moving average and has just taken off like a rocket. So I like the NASDAQ here. It's coming back to meeting all time highs. Let's take a look at the, the NASDAQ composite itself, the actual index, and take a look here. Uh, same thing. Now it hasn't hit it all, its all time highs yet, but it has moved out above, um, above the moving averages. And you can also see the W here, right here. Watch my cursor, the W pattern and the resistance line was right around here, and that was roughly at you know 13,000, almost 600, and it just moved above that. So NASDAQ looks strong. It wants to try to take out its all-time highs. Let's look at the NASDAQ futures itself. Now, these are the futures contracts. 
almost almost at its all-time high. So the Nasdaq looks strong, and when the Nasdaq goes, everything else falls. So it's going to take the S&P 500 and Dow also along with it. So those are the three stocks I like for for strength. Let's let's go over them one more time. We've got the QQQ, the triple Qs has left the station now. So it moved above the W pattern and the resistance was right around here. So it's gone up. Um, I like it for the future. I like things the way things are going here in, in the US at least. Vax, vaccinations are, are rolling out. We've got about 150 million people vaccinated already. Uh, businesses are opening back up. People have gotten their, their stimulus money. Uh, I like the way things are looking for the economy and the stock market in general. Um, <clears throat> NASDAQ tech stocks will always go. You know, a lot of players in these in, the, in these stocks. So the, the NASDAQ looks good. Let's take a look at Apple one more time. Apple has left the station. It's gotten above the W, gotten above the resistance line here, and uh, closed on the highs yesterday on Friday, April 9th. And I like Apple going up. And lastly, AMD. AMD is getting close. So this is one you can watch. Hasn't really left the station yet. If it gets above $85 for a couple days in a row, that should be the, the it should carry over and keep it moving higher. So those are the three stocks I like for bullish plays. How do you play them bullishly wise? What do you do? That's up to you. You can buy shares of stock. You can sell put options, which is what we do in our newsletter. You could sell put option spreads. You could buy deep in the money call options. All these things you can do to uh, help your bullish prediction. I have other videos. If you go look through my videos on this YouTube site, I've got videos on how to buy deep in the money calls. I've got videos on how to sell um, put option credit spreads. And of course, obviously selling naked put options. So those are the things that we do. And those are my three charts that I'm looking at for continued bullish movement uh, in the near future. All right. So that's it for your, for your, um, your options education for today. Let's move on back to our Saturday synopsis where we take a look at the indexes themselves, go more in depth into some individual stocks and see what we can see, see if we can find some other, other gems out there. So let's quickly take a look at the S and P 500. We look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S P 500. And the triple Qs is the same thing. It's exchange traded fund for the, for the NASDAQ, but the SPY, obviously you can see right here. Um, this is where we closed yesterday, Friday, April 9th, all time highs again, 411, or that's 4,100 for the, the S and P 500 index itself finally broke above the 4,000 mark. Um, this week alone, you know, we had the gap up on Monday, which, you can see right here, here's the five days worth of trading, all time new highs again. Let me break this down into a monthly chart so you can really see the length of, of the movement of the S&P 500 or the general market itself. Last lows, 2008, 2009, financial crisis, and then we had the pandemic here last March and uh, all time highs, all time highs. It's unbelievable how strong the market is, but as we've been saying, the stock market always goes up. Where else are you going to get a return on your money? And that's pretty much the only game in town. So the S&P 500 looks strong, looks like it wants to keep going. Obviously, we will have pullbacks along the way, but that's a good thing. Ebbs and flows. That keeps the market in check. We want to see pullbacks. Um, you know, it's getting a little ahead of itself here, but not too badly. The RSI down here, eh, starting to get a little overbought, but but not you know, not too terrible yet. Uh, what we would like to see is for the market to pull back a little so it can catch up to the 50 day and 20 day moving average. You can see how it, how it goes up. It hits the moving average, goes up, hits the moving average, either the 20 day or 50 day. It's going to bounce off of one of those. As long as we're in still bullish momentum, the stocks will still go up. That's the thing I want you to understand is that you know, you've heard it before, an object in motion stays in that direction until something moves it in the other direction. Well, here we've got an uptrending stock. The 20 day and 50 day moving averages pretty much will capture all the bounces. So when we talk about the timing for a bullish trade, we want to make sure that we time it, you know, somewhat properly, which would be a bounce off of one of the moving average lines, either the 20 day or 50 day. So the S&P 500, 
It's looking strong, may have a pullback, but that pullback should be contained by one of these up sloping 20 day or 50, 50 day moving averages. You're, if you're worried about missing the opportunity, the opportunities will come. Wait for the pullback to the bounce off of one of these lines. Let's take a look at the Dow, Dow Jones Industrial, same thing. I have these chart patterns that we keep on the, on the charts for a while, just so you can see what happened. You can see this W pattern here, sort of, you know, kind of an ugly W, but it was there, had the resistance line. Obviously the Dow moved above it, was in this nice uptrending channel, moved above it, I moved above the uptrending channel. So now it's on its way. All time new highs here as well. Let's go out to the monthly. So Dow, same thing, the 2009 here, pandemic March, 2020, and just powered higher. So, you know, everything looks good. Everything looks strong. There's really nothing to really derail these uptrends. I mean, another geo geopolitical, you know, world war, uh, another pandemic are the only things that could really knock the stock market down, but it doesn't knock it down forever. As we saw last March rallied back very quickly. So you have some patience, you wait for the pullbacks and the market goes up, wait for the bounce. You can see, um, the, the Dow bounced off of either the 20 day or the 50 day moving average. And, and it's, it's, it's going to keep going. You know, you keep going until it tells you otherwise, right? You just keep going until it tells you otherwise, let the market tell you what it wants to do. Let's look at the NASDAQ as well. We looked at this a little bit just before almost, almost has caught up to its all time highs. Um, but it does look strong, has a W had the W you can kind of see it here. Here's the W pattern, the resistance line here. Look at the very light line right here is resistance. So it's moved above resistance, trying to tag its all time high. If we look at the QQQ itself, um, it has basically almost got its all time highs here. So the, everything looks strong. All three indexes look strong. And when the indexes go up, it's easier for individual stocks themselves to go up. Let's take a look at some individual stocks, some that we, we like to look at each week. We've already looked at Apple, bullish on Apple. We looked at AMD, waiting for AMD to pop above the $85, $86 range. Um, let's take a look at Amazon because Amazon is starting to get its mojo back. Had, had a really good week. Last two weeks have been really good for Amazon. Uh, let me open this up, pull this down a little bit. So we have this very wide channel here that Amazon's been stuck in since you know, last June, June of 2020, last summer, it's been in this pretty wide range between, you know, 2,900 to you know, 3,500 or so. I mean, it's, that's a wide range, but that's where it's been stuck in. Had the, this triangle congestion pattern fell below it and now has moved above it or, or inside of it. So Amazon finished on the highs of the day yesterday. Here's the bar. Friday's trading all contained in this one bar right here finished on the high because you can see the dash mark on the right side of the bar so uh amazon could move above it and if it could get above say 3550 um soon amazon's on its way to more all-time new highs so it, it it bounced off the support line here whatever date this was this was roughly march 5th so a little over a month ago it bounced right down here and is moving its way up so really Amazon needs to get above, I'd say 3550 for it to really start to go for all time new highs again. So Amazon is bullish for now, um, what it's showing me on the charts and, you know, it may, it may pull back towards this uptrending downline here, but Amazon seems to be getting its mojo back. What else? Google, we looked at Google's been pretty strong very strong all time new highs. Google it had been in this little pattern here, sideways action. Um, and then it finally bounced on the uptrending 50 day moving average. It had the nice support line here. So it couldn't, couldn't pop down through it. Landed on support of the 50 day moving average as well. And that was just the impetus to, to keep Google moving higher. So Google is pretty strong. What else? What other stocks do we like to look at? Microsoft. You know, we look a lot of tech stocks because these are the ones that everyone likes to play with. 
Microsoft finally is getting its act together as well. It looks just like Google where it, it had the channel, moved above it, came back down below it, found some support at the 50-day moving average, did a little congestion here, and finally, finally found its footing and has started to move higher. I think this is all-time highs for Microsoft. Let's take a look here. Yep, all-time new highs. Just a beautiful uptrending chart here. So Microsoft, you know, found, su found support at, at the line here, found support at both the 20-day and 50-day moving average. These are the things that you need to look for when you finally want to decide it's time to get into a trade. Uh, Microsoft looks strong, uh, may have a little bit of a pullback as the moving averages move up to meet it. So, you know, if you, if you decided, hey, I want to get long Microsoft and you're thinking, well, it, you know, maybe we're topping here. Wait, wait to see if it pulls back a little. I mean, it's cleared all of this, so the bullish momentum should continue for, for Microsoft, maybe after a little bit of a pullback. What else do we have? Um, what other stocks do we like? Uh, Costco is one that we've watched before. We had talked about the hugely oversold spot right here. The RSI got well oversold, and we had this volume explosion right on the uh, day that it made the lows. And I said, you know, it's probably going to hit a reversal because you had all these these oversold indicators lining up, and that's exactly what it did right on that day. And Costco's really come back quite a bit. I had gotten, I bought some maybe around three hundred seventeen dollars a share, and I sold some out when it hit it hit uh, the resistance at the twenty day moving average. I got out unfortunately, and then it's just made all this move without me. But you know that's what happens. That's that you know that's part of part of investing. But Costco. Looking strong again, has cleared all this stuff here, and um, so it should be on the move for the foreseeable future. What other stocks do we like to take a look at? Let's look at Tesla. Another favorite of a lot of people. Tesla still having some trouble, you know, getting out of its own way here. Uh, had made all-time highs near $900 a share and just started to come down. We have these triangle patterns um, these congestion patterns, uh, but, uh, you know, Tesla still can't really get above the $700 mark. It's been hitting some resistance there. Let's draw a line here. Maybe keep this on the chart for a while. Uh, let's put it right around, right around here. Or so resistance, this is around the $710 mark and see what, see what, um, Tesla can do. It needs to get above this resistance line, a little above 700, and it needs to get above this down sloping 50 day moving average. It has to do that before you can become more confident that Tesla is on its next run higher. So it has to clear, it's above the 20 day moving average, which is good, but it has to clear the 50 day and get above this resistance line. It has to do that for a couple days in a row. One day doesn't make a new trend. So you have to wait, give it a couple days to get above here. If it can get up to maybe $725, $750, then there could be room and confidence from other people to get on board and keep it moving high. But for now, you have to wait until it clears this resistance. So if you're bullish, you know, give it a little more time. You don't want to jump in too early. Um, so that's Tesla. What else we have? Let's take a look at some other stocks. GameStop, we like to look at just for fun. GameStop, still hanging around, still hanging around here. $158 a share. Um, you know, I don't know what to say about GameStop. I'm not involved, but, you know, some people still like to do it. You could maybe draw congestion pattern here. You know, I got a little triangle here, maybe. Uh, it's a wide triangle there. Let me let me take this one out. Let's let's draw it from down low here. So you got this pretty wide triangle pattern, congestion pattern. Um, it's either going to blow out above or start getting knocked down. Once it gets out of this wide range here, um, I, so this is like maybe $160 a share at the apex of the triangle. Um, it's going to go up or go down strongly. Don't know which way yet. Options are very expensive. Buying straddles, you know, that takes advantage of a move in either direction, but the options are very expensive. So be careful if that's what you're thinking of doing. What other what other stocks do we like to take a look at? Let's take a look at some of the Bitcoin related stocks because we've been doing some some stuff on those in our newsletters. We like to take a look at um, Riot. If you're if you're big on Bitcoin and you're a bull in Bitcoin, 
you know, these two stocks I'm about to show you are, are Bitcoin related. They will move with Bitcoin. This is Riot, uh, Riot blockchain. Uh, it's been stuck in this, this wide triangle pattern, congestion pattern. We're just waiting for this thing to move out. If Bitcoin keeps moving up and it's made almost new highs again this morning, it's over $61,000 per coin. So uh, if the market was open today, Riot would probably, uh, you know, see some higher action. So we're waiting for it to get out of this triangle uh, congestion pattern. Most likely it's going to move higher as long as Bitcoin keeps going up. We look at Mara, which is Marathon Holdings. These guys uh, mine for uh, these digital mining, digital Bitcoin mining. Mara has been going up. I like the chart pattern. We've gotten some uh, trades done on Mara this week in our newsletters. It looks good. Um, it's strong. It follows Bitcoin itself. So if Bitcoin keeps going up, these two stocks, Mara and, and uh, Riot, will, should keep going up as well. Um, you know, I've been talking about Bitcoin for years now when it had been like in the 3000 to 5000 per coin range back in 2018, 2017, first started mentioning it. If anyone wants to get involved, go. Um, uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Coinbase is is one of the great um, places where you can buy and sell Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, so you can use that as an account. If you want to open an account, you can use my affiliate link in the description here. We both would get some free Bitcoin if you choose to do so. I just want to let you know up front about that. So there's Mara, Marathon Holdings, and Riot. Um, any other stocks that we really want to take a look at? Facebook, we don't look at too much. Facebook's making, I think we're at all-time highs for Facebook. Let's take a quick look here. Yep, Facebook, all-time new highs, almost $320 a share. So it, it bounced, right? You know, it bounced off of the 200-day moving average. This is the the, basically the line in the sand for most stocks, the 200 day moving average. So it has bounced each time it has come in contact with it and finally got uh, off its keister and started to make all time new highs for Facebook. Um, you know, I think that's it for today. Twitter, let's take a quick look at Twitter. Um, we got some trades in Twitter. Uh, we're, we're long. Uh, we had we liked it how it bounced right off the 50-day moving average, started to come back down, was looking for a bounce, and we got in right right around here when it started to bounce off the 50-day moving average. So make sure you look at the charts, make sure you look for the moving averages, where the moving averages are, where the stock is in conjunction with the moving averages. And if you want to get long, you can try to time it better by waiting for the bounce. That's that's the best way to get into a new trade. Okay, so that's it for the Saturday synopsis, we like to take a look at the charts. Lastly, haven't looked at it in a while, let's take a quick look at the VIX, the volatility indicator. Finally, finally, as the market moves higher, the VIX goes down. Move down below the long-term um, trend line here from last March's pandemic. Volatility spiked last March, but has spent the last year moving lower and finally uh, has gotten below this support line and um, it's moving down closer to its long-term average here. So the VIX is coming off. That means option prices are cheaper as well. Okay, so lastly, uh, let's just go to uh, our website here. This is part of Coinbase, but this is not what I wanted to show you. Our website, smartoptionseller.com. Our Put Selling Basics Guide. Learn how to sell put options if you want for free. Go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Just click on the Put Selling Basics tab here and you can put in your name and email address get our free guide and our services tab if you hover your mouse over the services tab have our two newsletters and our one on one on one coaching if you need a little help getting started all right well so that's all for me today i hope this has been helpful if you like this content please give me a thumbs up in the youtube uh channel here leave me a comment send me a question i'm here to help we're here to help and we want to get you to become better option traders. All right. That's all for me today. I hope everyone has a good weekend and I will see you next week. This is Lee Lowell signing off.